Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we're here to bring you the good news of heaven, that there's hope beyond the grave. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, grave, where is your victory? It's no longer there because Jesus has overcome the grave. And we're here to tell you the hope of the nations, that Jesus is alive, that he lives and reigns forevermore. And that as we put our faith and trust in him, the whims and things of this world will fade away. We're here to, do, to tell you the good news of heaven, probably better than any other news you've heard for weeks, because all we see in the media today is fear-mongering. But there is hope. There's hope in this life, and it's found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Not by religion, not by duty, not by acts of your own volition, but by the good work of the Lord Jesus Christ upon that cross of Calvary. What a marvelous work he's done. He set us free, and we are free indeed. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And we're here to declare the freedom of heaven, that Jesus sets us free, ladies and gentlemen. He sets us free. We are doing our essential work here this afternoon, shining the light of the Lord Jesus Christ upon all flesh, that those of you who hear the message might believe in the Lord Jesus, that you might have everlasting life in him. For whosoever puts their faith in him, whosoever puts their trust in him, will have everlasting life. Repent and believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the most essential work in all the earth, that Jesus is alive and he lives and reigns forevermore. So we're here to tell you of the good news of heaven. Hallelujah. We're here to tell you that there's hope in this life, ladies and gentlemen. There's hope for a future. There's hope beyond the grave. And his name is Jesus. Jesus is the beginning and the end. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the light of the world. And in him is no darkness. In him is no deceit. By his blood we are healed. You know, today is an incredible day. Today is the day of Passover. And the Passover lamb has come into the world. Jesus is the final sacrifice for all sin. By his blood we are healed. By his blood we have been atoned, our sins have been atoned for. He was pierced for our transgressions. Upon him was laid the iniquity of us all. Jesus is the Passover lamb, ladies and gentlemen. Today is the Passover, and it's the blood of Jesus that seals our new life, that seals us into the new covenant. The Old Testament proclaims that there'll be an anointed one who will come, who will never see decay, who will never fade or fail or forsake. And he came into the world. His name is Jesus. He rose from the grave. He is the resurrected king. He is the Lord God of heaven and earth. And anyone who puts their faith in him, who puts their trust in him, will be saved. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's not by religion. It's not by acts of our own volition. But it's by the good work of the Lord Jesus Christ. So put your faith in him. Put your trust in him. Put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe upon his holy name and you will be saved. Not by Confucius, not by Muhammad. You know, one thing that's worried me is that we, what, at what juncture we turn to God? All we hear is, let's turn to man, let's turn to ourselves. We don't have all the answers, ladies and gentlemen. God has all the answers. All knowledge and authority and glory pours forth from the throne room of grace. Why is it we're not turning to the Lord God Almighty, who's able to save? Salvation is from God. Salvation is from our God. And he's granted it to all flesh, no matter what tribe, whatever tongue, whatever nation you're from. You can put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on him, and he will save you from death. Salvation is from God and God alone. Hallelujah. His blood has sealed the new covenant. There's life in his blood. He was pierced for our transgressions upon that cross of Calvary. And whosoever believeth upon his holy name will be saved. He's the resurrected king. He's the Lord. Almighty. No problem, sir. What's your, do you want to talk to my colleague? What's your necessity for being out today, mate? What's your necessity for being out today? We're preaching the gospel. Sorry? Preaching the gospel, sir. Are you exercising? Uh, we're doing our essential work. 
is it essential? Sorry. Are you getting gross? Wait, I hang on. We're going to meet us. Can you talk to my colleague if you're going to talk to any of us? Thank you. Sorry, I appreciate it's frustrating for you, but I'm just having a chat with him. Yeah, we're going to meet you. But hang on. Remain in distance. Remain in distance. Is it essential? Oh, more than essential, sir. More than essential. But is it essential by you doing it essential? Well, the government, the government guidelines actually says religious workers are allowed to come out, sir. So that's why we're out. It does say that, yeah. It does. It says religious workers. And I'm a pastor, sir. So. Pardon? No, sir. It, 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 religious workers are allowed to do their duty, and as I say, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pastor. At the moment, we're outside a hospital. Yeah. Very stressed nurse, very scared. Well, this is my job. This, this is my job, sir. Yes. Please. It was a complete. Yeah, we are going to move. You'll, you'll have noticed, sir, that we were just walking. You know, we, we, we didn't camp up like these journalists. Well, what I'm wondering, sir, is why don't you ask all these journalists? I mean, that work, I would argue, is not essential. Certainly not as essential as the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, as I say, the government have set the guidelines, and it says religious workers. We're going to, we're walking, sir, yes. We're walking. We've come off the road. Well, thank you, gentlemen. It's a delight to see you all. Um, uh, have a good day. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are here to preach the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. He lives and reigns forevermore. I appreciate that it's really just free when you walk around the city. It's not appropriate at the moment in front of a hospital. Yeah? Stress patients, yeah, we'll, stress nurses. It's, it's the best place to be. It's the best place to be. There's hope beyond the grave. Given the subject coming out of the block of land. No, well, that's in your. Uh, then, the then, then it's two opposing views. The, the, the guidance there, from the government is, is that we're allowed to be out here, sir. Let me finish. The guidance from the government, we're allowed to be out here. We're religious workers. We're not staying out. We're passing by. All right. We're passing by. I think it's probably best to pass by and not come back past the hospital for the moment. Yeah, we. Is well, I might not actually ask that request, sir, but I, 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 as I say, I am walking. We're going to travel that school. Where are you, where you guys around. live? Where have you travelled in from? Uh, we live in uh, London. Where in London? Think nearby, so. nearby, sir. How nearby? Ne ne nice How to nearby? see you, sir. Are we talking like 200 yards down the road yeah, so, or are we talking like said, the south? We're not spending, we, are <laughs> we live nearby, yeah. sir. Yeah, we are well, the government guidance for an exercise is that you should do it in your local area. So yeah, I agree with you, sir, but we are doing our essential work in the gospel. I suggest that you do this kind of essential work and you know exercise back in your local you know, area. Well, I mean, that's yeah. a suggestion I'd like suggest in that case you contact the NHS direct, not stand outside the hospital. We weren't standing outside, we were just walking on by, You know sir. full well what I mean, yeah? All right, thank you, sir. All right, I suggest you both leave for now. Thank you. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are here to proclaim the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. How is it in our nation we we're told that this isn't essential work? This is the most important work in all the earth. It's bringing people into reconciliation with God our Maker. God is our peace, God is our refuge, God is our stronghold, God is our fortress, God is the one in whom we can trust. It's not trusting in the police force, it's not trusting in the government, it's trusting beyond those things. There's one who's seated in heavenly places at the right hand of the Father and his name is Yeshua HaMashiach. His name is Jesus Christ, the anointed one of heaven. And anyone who puts their faith in him will be restored, redeemed, brought into life everlasting. So we're here to tell you that there's hope in this life, ladies and gentlemen, that there's hope for a future, that there's hope beyond the grave, there's hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. So you might be anxious at this hour, you might be full of anxiety at this hour, but Jesus says, come unto me all who are weary, come unto me all who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This is a promise from God. If you're anxious, if you're weary at this hour, Jesus will give you rest. In fact, Jesus came to save the sinner. He came to save the broken. He came to save the lost, the, one, the ones who are desperate and the ones who are in need. He came to save us from sin. He is the anointed one of heaven and he's worthy of our attention. He's worthy of our affection at this hour. Jesus said himself, anyone who comes unto him will, be, will find rest. So turn your eyes upon Jesus at this hour. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Turn, turn your eyes upon Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. He's the only one able to give us life at this hour. He's the hope of the nations. In him is life and life forevermore. Whoever believes upon his name will have life and peace and rest and everything else. Knowledge of God. In fact, Jesus came to reconcile all flesh 
into communion with the Father. He came to reconcile us into communion with God, our Maker. We can be at peace with God. And God is the eternal one of heaven. He's from everlasting to everlasting. And we can be at rest with God by the good work of the Lord Jesus Christ upon that cross of Calvary. And on the third day, he rose again. You might not know, but today is Passover. And what the, Jews, the Jewish community do every year is they put, um, celebrate Passover when death passed over the Israelites. And now Jesus is the Passover lamb, which means that anyone who trusts in him will not know death. No, you'll, you'll know freedom from death. You'll know life everlasting. Jesus is the only hope we have, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus is the anointed one of heaven. Jesus is our peace. Jesus is our joy. Jesus is the life giver. It is in him that we can put our faith and trust. He is the eternal one of heaven. His name is Emmanuel, which means God with us. You see, God came to dwell amongst men, that we might know his nature, that we might know what he was like. And did he dwell amongst the rich? Absolutely not. He came for the sinner. He came for the poor. He came for the broken. He came for the destitute. He came for the lost. He came for everyone who is weary, anyone who needs hope. And anyone who is lost can come unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever believes in him will have streams of living water welling up within them. Whoever believes in him will know that he is the light of the world. In him is no darkness. In him is no decay. Jesus is the life of, and hope of the nations, ladies and gentlemen. It's in Jesus. We can't trust in ourselves. You know, God has made us able, but not able, not, not able to conquer death. It still uh, uh, resounds in the earth. But Jesus has come and conquered the grave. He's victorious over death. And we are born again of the Spirit of God. And we live now in the knowledge of God. And you too can have that same knowledge of everlasting life welling up within you. In fact, in Isaiah chapter 11, we, re in, we read that, um, with joy I will draw waters from the wells of salvation. With joy I will draw waters from the wells of salvation. And then Jesus comes and says that ever, whoever believes in me will have wells of salvation springing up from within them. And so as we believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, we have wells of salvation. We know that God uh, saves. He saves us from death. Not only is the Lord Jesus our Savior, but he is king upon the throne. Not only is the Lord Jesus our Savior, but he is the Lord God Almighty who brings all things into communion, into reconciliation with the Father. Hallelujah. This is the best news in all the earth, that Jesus lives and reigns forevermore, that he is the anointed one of heaven, and he's the only one worthy of our attention at this hour, ladies and gentlemen. It's no use turning to ourselves. Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ who has overcome the grave, who has conquered death, who has relieved us from the grave. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, grave, where is your sting? Jesus has overcome the grave, ladies and gentlemen. And anyone who puts their faith in him will be redeemed. So turn from your lives, turn from your sin and repent and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and believe upon his holy name. Put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one able to give us life and hope and rest and peace and everything else. Ladies and gentlemen, as we turn to ourselves, we won't know life. But as we turn to the Lord Jesus, we will know life. You know, it's all well and good applauding our NHS workers. My sister's actually a nurse. And, um, you know, God bless her soul. I, I love my sister. I love the NHS. What a wonderful system we have. But there's hope beyond these things, ladies and gentlemen. There's hope beyond the, the, the workers and, and people and flesh and blood. There's hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's hope in him. There's hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen. You know, it's all well and good clapping our NHS workers. You know, on, on, on fair play, they do a wonderful job every season, every hour. But there's one who has done the wonderful work upon that cross of Calvary. And his name is Jesus. He is beyond the flesh and blood. He is in spiritual, spiritual places. He is in heavenly places. He is exalted and he is at the right hand of the Father. He is the Lord God Almighty. One of, the, one of the people listening to Jesus asked him, what is the greatest commandment? And the Lord Jesus said, the greatest commandment is this, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Well, we are here this afternoon loving you as ourselves. We want you to know the good news that Jesus is alive. You know, you might not like